Windows 10 is weird. Okay, not weird, I guess different from any other operating system we've seen. If we take a look at older versions of Windows like Windows XP, Vista 7 and 8, we can see that aside from the service packs and the point one update to Windows 8, we don't see that many new feature updates to the operating system after its release. We mostly just see performance, stability, and security updates throughout its lifespan. And even then, the service packs don't provide that much functionality updates to the operating system, so for the most part, it's just stability updates. But Windows 10 is different, because after Microsoft released it in 2015, they were dedicated to pushing updates to the operating system every six months with major feature updates, and as you can see, there's a, there's a couple of Windows 10 builds. And this spans from 2015 to 2020 even today. But I figured, let's take a trip back to 2015 and take a look at Windows 10's initial build version 1507 or codename Threshold 1, and compared to today's modern version of Windows 10 version 2004 or codename 20H1. Windows 10 compared 5 years apart, let's see what's changed in the past 5 years. So on my desktop I have two ISO files, the first one being Windows 10 version 1507, the version from 2015, and Windows 10 version 2004, the version from 2020. Alright, so you might be saying to yourself, okay, this guy is just gonna go through the whole setup process of Windows 10 and waste our time, but that's actually not the case because the setup menu on both versions of Windows 10 have actually changed significantly over, over the past five years. So I wanted to show that off before we get to the juicy stuff, which is the desktop itself. Alright. Let's start the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna show the setup side by side. So let's search for the first one. Which one is this? 2015? Yep. Start this one and we'll put this one to this side. And then we'll go ahead and insert version 2004 on this side. All right. Get ready to be entertained. So initially, at first, I mean, both versions of Windows 10 have the bit, almost the same exact kind of um, initial setup process. But once we get to the out-of-box out experience, it starts to get really different. So let's click the next on both. So the first part might seem pretty boring. I mean, this pretty much looks exactly the same. So, I mean, the only thing I've seen is this is a skip button and this one is an I don't have a product key button. And I'm not going to bother to do that. Um, oh, that was probably because that was a... Yeah, this is basically an all-in-one package. This is just Windows 10 Pro and Windows 10 Home. So, we're just going to go ahead and install the Pro versions in both. Last updated July 2015. And, ooh, this one's been last updated in July, June of 2018. I guess they haven't updated the license and the checkbox. You can see that the checkbox is slightly different. Why do I pay attention to this stuff? I'm really weird. And I guess just for fun, this isn't really scientific or anything, but let's see which one gets to the out-of-box experience first. Okay, finally, after like, I don't know, even 30, half an hour, both, both setup screens are finally at the out-of-box experience. That took way too long. So as you can see, the setup screen is completely different. Let's go ahead and not put in the project key. Let's just put this at United States. Let's not add a second keyboard layout. I mean, why would we? Now it's gonna do something with the network. So while this is happening, let's go ahead and click Express Settings. Oh, okay, it's already restarting. Wait, are you serious? Is that it? Is that all of Windows 10 setup? That would be cool. Setup for personal use. While this is restarting, we'll just keep setting this one up. Um, this is very organized. If we're probably gonna be for oh no. Oh, offline account. Oh, did they add the option back? I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. Limited experience. See, they, they just beg you. They just beg you to use a Microsoft account. I don't know why. They just beg you to. Um, or actually, I guess I know why they want to promote their own services, but like still. When you're forcing it on users, that's not good. All right. Windows 10. Yeah, let's click next. Who cares about a password? We'll get hacked. Like, look at this. Look, this is all stuff that no one needs. Maybe the location services you'll need for some apps, but like, come on. Come, come on. Come on. Advertising ID? Like, what is that? Do more activity across devices. I don't want to. Let Cortana help you get things done. I don't know. We'll accept this for now. I don't know, because I want to try using Cortana so we could do stuff. We could actually use Cortana. Okay. So, it's done with that process. Okay, well, it's already done. 
This one just asked me to do express settings and it's restarting again. So I own it. Let's click next. See, as you can see, this, this whole setup process is just, it's just a blue background. There's no like Cortana setup or anything like that. Um, let's skip this step. Just call this Windows 10 2015. Next. Dude, I th oh, this, okay. 2020, Windows 10 2020 is gonna win. The truth is no one really won. No, it's already almost there. We're, we're setting up every, oh. Oh, okay, there you go. Oh, whoa. Whoa, <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, it was logging on. I got so confused for a second, but anyways. Aside from all that, we got everything finally downloaded. Yes! Oh my gosh, it's finally done. That took so long. Alright, so after an hour of finally getting these virtual machines set up, we can finally start comparing both versions of Windows 10. So on the left is Windows 10 version 1507, released from... On the right is Windows 10 version 2004, released in 2020. Um, for the rest of the video, I'm going to be considering the left 1507 and the right 2004, just so it's simplified and I'm not naming these operating systems completely different things. But the first thing that stuck out to me when I was installing both of these was the background. So, the background in Windows 10 version 1507 is definitely very unique. This is definitely one of the positive sides to Windows 10 in general is that this background looks honestly really cool. There's like beams of lights shooting out, like a lot more like lighting here. Um, honestly, I don't really like this newer version of the background. It definitely looks a lot more boring. I mean, it's kind of obvious that it looks a lot more boring, uh, but I feel like this is supposed to accompany the light theme in Windows 10. There's a light theme right over here. In this version, there is no light theme, so you're basically forced to stay with a dark mode. I also wanted to talk about the apps in general, so if you go to the home screen in the settings app, I'm going to be basically describing every single built-in app in the Windows uh, as I'm going to be describing the Windows settings. So pretty much every single app over the past five years has had not like a significant change, but they've definitely had like some strange, you know, like UI changes with some layouts being different and some fonts being different. For example, you can see that the title over here, it says Windows settings and this one just has says settings. Uh, but this one, the one in 1507, everything is capitalized, the font is bolder and it's capitalized over here it's properly punctuated and it's thinner um, but I've noticed that a lot of app elements are a lot bigger in Windows 10 1507 over here it's slightly smaller and if you go into any menu you can see that there's icons accompanying uh, accompanying pretty much every single menu over here there's not really an icon and I mean overall the UI looks slightly different so I'm not going to go into every little detail but this applies to pretty much every single app with little UI layout changes if I go to you know the Microsoft store which was actually renamed uh, which was actually previously called the Windows store so it's called the Microsoft store in version 2004 in 1507 it's called the Windows store so they rebranded it it again same same kind of deal you can see that they're there's a capitalization over here. Uh, apparently, it changes to lowercase so whenever I full screen it. I don't really know. So you can see that the user interface of the app, it looks the same, but the layout is slightly different. Like, look at this. The top free app section is down over here with some featured apps taking up more of the screen. So it's, it's little changes like that. But let's move on to the taskbar and the start menu and stuff. So first thing that, before I even open the start menu, I noticed that the search bars actually are completely different. So over here, it's uh, in 1507, the search bar is completely black and it says search the web in Windows. And 2004, it's it's white and it says type here to search with this little search icon, which is not present. But that's the search bars, it's it's slightly different. If we if you open the start menus themselves, you can see that you can see a whole lot of different things. You can tell at first glance it might seem the same, but when you start using it, you'll definitely notice there's, there's some slight differences. So first off, the there's a bunch of new icons in Windows 10 version 2020. Uh, like for example, the Photos app, it's more of a 3D. It has a lot more life to it. You can see that there's it's 3D. It's more colorful uh, in Windows 10 2015. It's flat and it resembles Windows 8, which isn't a bad thing, but honestly, I definitely prefer uh, how Windows 10 2004 handles the icons. It definitely feels 
uh, like each icon has a lot more personality. Over here, it's just flat, and this applies to pretty much a bunch. Of, like this applies to pretty much every single icon in the system. If I go to the app list, which is its own button, over here, it's not as you can see. Everything is like flat more. It resembles Windows 8 a lot more. Over here, it's its own thing. Everything is 3D, more colorful, which is definitely a problem I had with the older versions of Windows 10. I like how they're finally adding some life to Windows 10. But let's go back to the main menu. So over here, there's a hamburger menu, which has a couple of shortcuts. There's These shortcuts are pretty much the same here. The user... I, the user menu is up here rather than it being in the hamburger menu and or just being here in general. So as you can see, again, a lot we a lot of strange layout differences. But overall, the star menu is still like the same thing. It's just that the layout is different and the icons are completely different as well. Cortana, I really wanted to talk about this. So if you go to search, oh yeah, first of all, search before we get to Cortana. Search is its own menu. It's not integrated with the start menu anymore. It just it looks like it's in its own menu. And that applies to Cortana as well. So Cortana is its own app now. Over here it was integrated with the with the start menu itself. So everything is a lot more unified in version 1507, which I definitely like. I don't like how everything is separated in version 2004. So you know, the search is separated, the start menu is separated, Cortana is separated. You can see that the start menu is, it's, is in the same menu, the search button is in the same menu, the Cort Cortana is in the same menu. So yeah, that's definitely interesting. If I search up, let's just search up Bing over here. And if I go here, if I search up Bing, um, I mean, the search results are pretty much almost the same. It's, it's just slightly different. <laughs> it's, it doesn't look that entertaining, to be honest. Let's take a look at the file explorer. So as you can see, if you go, if you look at the icon at the taskbar, the file explorer is a, is the 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 icon is slightly different if you take a really like a really close look at it it's slightly different slightly different color and slightly different file icon uh, but that's not the important part over here uh, I've noticed that the, the the menus the the menu bars they actually they're actually bigger and that's probably to accompany the touchscreen devices which is not bad at all if you're using a desktop computer it might be slightly annoying but yeah, the icons, the menus have been slightly bigger. The search bar is bigger uh, on 2004 and 1507. They're like the same as Windows 7, 8.1, stuff like that. Let's take a look at the action center. Um, yeah, pretty much, pretty much the same. As you can see, here's more of what I'm talking about. Uh, Windows 10 has a lot more bolder, bigger fonts, whereas over here it's more thinner. Uh, everything is... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's just the small stuff, you know, like the expand button is on the left over here in 2004. In 1507, the expand button is on the right. Or the no new notifications men uh, text is on the middle. Over here, it's on the top. Like, it's it's all this small stuff, you know. It's just, it's like unnecessary, but it's at the same time, like, it's like, why would you do it? Like, why? It, there's no reason. There's also, I've noticed there's a lot, a little bit more transparency in... Uh, Windows 10 version to uh, 1507. This might be a virtual machine thing, but I mean, you can clearly see that there's transparency effects in the action center over here. There aren't, and that pretty much applies to a bunch of small menus. If I go to here, okay, well, that was a terrible example of what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, he, like here. So there's transparency behind the calendar. Over here, there isn't. And there's a setup agenda menu. There isn't any sort of agenda menu here, so. They've added, they've ad definitely added some uh, features over the past years. Let's take a look at the old Microsoft Edge. There's square tabs, you know, the tabs are square here. It's curved and it doesn't take up the whole menu bar or the whole window. If we go to YouTube over here, you can see it just loads up instantly. If you go to YouTube over here, you can see that it, it takes slightly longer. Yeah, it takes a lot longer to load. So that's why it uses the Chromium... Uh, web-based engine over here it uses the edge html engine you can also add like chrome extensions to microsoft edge and this in the new version in the old versions you couldn't do any any of that so this version is definitely uh the 1507 uh, microsoft edge legacy uh it's definitely becoming more and more outdated so yeah don't don't expect this to become 
uh, updated anytime soon. So this is this is the future of Microsoft Edge, and I've definitely noticed that this uh, Microsoft Edge has been gaining a lot more traction over the past few months, which is definitely good. This encourages more browser competition. Oh, oh, I forgot to mention the control panel. So in the control panel, uh, this is one thing I noticed the most. Uh, one of the things I've noticed the most. So of course, there's like a slight icon change between some of the uh, these icons, but whatever. That's not what I was trying to talk about. So the control panel, as you can see in version 1507, there's a lot more menus in the control panel. Like as you can see, appearance and personalization, there's a couple more menus over here. There isn't and the clocks and all this stuff. There's a lot more menus in 1507's control panel. And in version 2004's, there isn't really anything. It just gets to the bare minimum. And this is because uh, when Microsoft released Windows 10, they were still transitioning everything from the control panel to the settings menu. And this made, the, this made Windows 10 feel really incomplete. But yeah, they were still transitioning everything. So there were still a lot of things in the control panel. They've definitely like completed it. Uh, more or less completed it in Windows 10 version 2004. There's, I mean, look at this. There's less menus. There's also a, a personalization applet in the theme. Like, uh, this is an example of what I'm talking about. They completely removed this theme section in the control panel and replaced it with their own little menu for their own theme. So you can, you know, just like before, I mean, I don't know why there isn't any cursor customization or anything like that, but... You can change your sounds from here, your cursor, your background, your color, your, pretty much everything from here. So what has changed over the past five years? So first off, the background has changed and the icons have been completely changed. You know, can tell it's a lot more 3D. It gives Windows 10 more personality. And it all comes down to just a couple of UI elements just moving around and stuff. So again, there's a lot that's changed, but at the same time, it's not significant enough to say that it's, own, it, that it's its own operating system. But overall, I think Windows 10 is taking the right direction. It's definitely refining things a lot better than it ever was five years ago. There's definitely some things I like in version 1507 and, ver and things I like in version 2004. But overall, I feel like Windows 10 is definitely getting a lot better and it's definitely getting a lot more stable and refined and more consistent as the years go by. But that's pretty much it for the comparison between Windows 10 1507 and Windows 10 2004. Definitely liking what Microsoft is doing.